Excel is far from just a basic spreadsheet. And today I'm going to show you how you can take Excel and create this incredible auto workshop manager, complete with custom filters, automated and dynamic auto base, customizable customers, unlimited vehicles, issues, pictures, quotes and sales orders, and a whole lot more. It's going to be an incredible training you won't want to miss. So let's get started. All right, thank you so much for joining me. I've had a lot of requests for an auto workshop manager, the ability to manage a workshop garage maintenance or whatever with cars and put that all into an incredible single screen application. We've done that today. So thank you for the suggestions. I've now done it for you and I'm going to walk you through every step in this training. And of course, this template is absolutely free. All you need to do is click the link down below in the word download and I'll make sure to get that to you with your name and email. I create these trainings each and every week. In fact, these comprehensive detailed trainings are every single Tuesday and basic VBA are every Saturday. So make sure you subscribe and click the notification icon bell. That'll ensure that you get these trainings to you alerted each and every week today we're going to be going over this incredible sales order every step and you're going to learn how to create this yourself or you can even use it for your customers or create something and customize this and create it for sale so i'm going to walk you through every step so you won't want to miss a minute if you do like these trainings there are so many ways to support this channel including patreon patreon is a fantastic platform in which every single week i create updated videos so i take your suggestions your ideas is your feedback and I create an additional video and an updated workbook in which your ideas come to life when I take your ideas and I put them into that updated it also comes with a PDF code book so you can go through every step of the code and a whole lot of other features so make sure you do join us on patreon youtube silver membership is also exactly the same as our patreon silver so you wouldn't want to join both but there's two ways to join all right so let's get started on this training i'm going to give you an overview of this fully customizable application then we're going to go down into the details and we're going to drill down to every aspect and we're going to get into the code the formats the functions the features and anything else that might start with an f that i can think of so we're going to go over that and this particular training is a large workbook with more code so it wouldn't be from scratch otherwise this video would be six to seven hours i do love to create trainings from scratch in fact last week we created a very simple user form from scratch and then every little bit of code so we're going to alternate we can do these really cool big applications but they can't be from scratch i can do smaller ones from scratch so we'll alternate those because i know a lot of you like them from scratch all right so the idea is this we got to create some customers each customer can have unlimited vehicles so for example we've got a customer here and they've got three different vehicles when we select a specific vehicle that vehicle is going to show up and we're going to have some details about that we can then take that vehicle and we can have multiple issues for a different vehicle on a given order each vehicle can have different pictures so we can have vehicle pictures those are pictures about the issue each individual order would have a service date the type it could be a quote or it could be a sales order so we can click on here for sales order We'll click on here for estimate we can also have an individual bay notice this is on bay two if i want to switch that to bay eight which is the area in which the cars are stored i can do just that if it's in progress and i can switch it to bay eight once i save and update that order that car is going to switch down here to bay eight so we change the car notice we change the cards black if i were to change that car to let's say blue and then we would save and update that work order that car is going to change down to blue we can also switch it back to bay two so it's fully customizable now these bays are areas in which we save the cars which is where we store them it can be called different things this is fully customizable in other words maybe you don't want to call it bays maybe we want to call it something else so like pit garage so we could use the word garage and it's going to change throughout the application now it's called auto garages we could then change the names inside here and throughout the application so when we go back into the auto worksheet we now see in progress auto garages we could change the names from bay one to bay two it's all linked to the admin so whatever we add update here Bays 1 through 10 is where your automobiles will be stored while they're being worked on. If we try to select on here and we try to change this to Bay 2, now Bay 2 is currently occupied, it won't let us, right? We cannot put a car in for repair 
if there's another car already there. So we need to have protections saying bay two is already occupied. Please locate an empty garage. Notice how the word changed to garage, which is kind of helpful. We're going to change it back to bay, which is what we had it because that's something. They're called auto bays, which is like small areas in which the car is going to be worked on. We have car colors. Now these car colors corresponded to the colors of our little cars here so if i were to select this and i were to change this car to let's say yellow and then we save and update that that car is going to automatically change so it gives us a visual representation of the cars that are currently being worked on notice we also have the information that says yellow ford here so we have information about that if i change that to the red nissan that this customer has and i save and update that order we now see that the red nissan altima is being worked on so fully dynamic we can select a specific car and have that order show up here it's a sales order we can select on a sales order or order quote i need to get something updated on that and so we can show that which is very very helpful and also what we can do is we can then select on a particular order here so there's different ways to select on an order we have a drop down list of all the orders here we may only want to show pending orders we can do that those that have not been worked on yet so that way we know which people are actually waiting we can clear all the filters out and we can show all the orders regardless of status and it's going to show us all the orders we can search orders by different information we can search based on a customer name so if i only want to look for a specific customer i can do that as well it's only going to show john's particular orders very very helpful we can also search by any other such as order id if i want to search for a specific order i want to look for just one order and that's order id one so we can clear out the filters i can also show only today's orders only orders which have a service date of today so that's kind of helpful and so we can quickly get to the orders we want so we'll be going over this inside the admin we have a few more customizations notice that there are some pictures that we have those pictures have to be stored in a specific location so we have to set the location of those pictures on our sales order there's a message for customers notice we have it here there's a message down here it says thank you for your business call 1-800-FRED-FIX-IT for appointments so we've got a custom message here that custom message is linked to this here and we've given a name range called custom message the nice thing about this auto workshop is we have a list of parts and the cost now those are the cost to us but we may want almost certainly want to mark that up so what we can do is we can set a default markup let's say we want to charge 55 percent more than our cost we can do that and that means as we add a part here we select the item type part we select a part type like brake pads that is automatically going to be marked up here we can also select labor for example we have technicians here's a list of technicians we have an hourly cost for each of those technicians the cost of doing business now we're going to want to mark that up notice that fred fredders is a 35 dollar an hour cost if we've set a 45 percent markup for that and we go into the auto workshop we can also set individual markup we can change it on a per job basis which is quite nice and i decide i'm going to select labor and then notice the drop down list changes to employees where it was parts and now we see one at 50 75 so that has been marked up automatically on a 45 percent basis and we also control our cost so we do know our total build labor our total build parts our total build and our labor costs and our parts costs and our total costs so we see that we have a profit of 40.3 percent so we can keep track of both the build labor and build parts and the profit margins which is very helpful okay we also can list a number of service technicians that have worked on an individual job up to four different technicians we can separate between a quote and a sales order which is nice there's one thing i want uh, when i go over the code when i select a particular order notice that uh, it doesn't change right so i want to make sure this option changes that's the only thing i want to get that's an easy option so we can also print the order which is kind of nice we can delete an order if i want to delete an order we can save or update and we can add a new order it'll automatically clear out the fields and it'll set some defaults notice there's some defaults here on that new order those defaults are set from the admin screen so we have some new order defaults we have a quote uh, order status the payment type and a manager associated and we also have a current user in case there's multi-users we've got order status and we got payment type so relatively simple on the admin screen inside our database we've got to track all of that when i select on an individual card the order for that car will show up which is kind of helpful if i decide that this is completed this red card all i would do is just mark it as completed 
I save and update that, and it's gonna be disappeared from the bay. So that's kind of nice. We know that that bay is now free. We can show the pending work orders here if we want to know. We see that this order is now pending. We can then put it inside bay one. So it's in progress now. We change it to bay one. And then we save and update that. And now that card occupies that bay. We can then run it and do all the things that we need, add technicians. All of this information for this order must be stored somewhere. So that's gonna be inside our orders database. Now inside that order database, all the information for that order is saved here. So we've got to have that somewhere and it's all stored there. The individual items, so these parts and labor items must be stored on a separate database. So we have them called order items database. So we'd have the order ID, the type that it is, the part, the description, the quantity, the amount, the total amount, the cost and the total cost the item row and the database row. Now the item row is the individual row in which it was stored inside our order. So this is item row nine, 10, 11, and so on. So we wanna store that because when we load that order up, I need to know what rows they're supposed to be on. Let's take a look at order. So we need to know what row that we wanna put this in this. So it's very important. And that is our order items database. We've got a list of customers. I want to load the customers when I decide I've got a new order and I want to load up a customer, I select a customer from the list or I simply just, uh, let's try that again, or I just start typing in and we can do that and just hit enter. It's going to load that customer name, address one, address two, email and phone must all be loaded out. I can clear the customer. I can add a brand new customer and I can save that customer. I can also enter a customer and I can update that address or any information and save it avenue. And so if we do that and I save that customer, that information is going to be saved for Betty White. So the next time that I load Betty White, let's load a different, that new information is going to be automatically come back up. So it's kind of helpful there. We can see that it's there. We can clear it out. We can delete a customer. So we've got to store that. That's going to be stored inside our customer database where we've got an ID, address fields, email, phone, and so on and so forth. We also have a list of customer names that are sorted alphabetically, which will help us locate customers. We've got a list of vehicles and we need a customer ID that's going to be associated, right? I've got to connect vehicles to individual customers. That's going to be important. So we have customer IDs and unique IDs on a per vehicle, the model, the color, license or VIN number, and some notes accordingly. We've also got some parts, which you saw, the part ID, the name, a description, and the cost of that part. A technician's database with more information than we probably need, but focus on the technician ID, the name, and the cost. That's what we're gonna really focus on in this training. And a pictures database. So we've got a list of pictures, the vehicle ID that it's associated with, the name of the picture and the database row that it's associated on. So that's kind of the fundamental roundup. So let's get into some of the details of how we created this application. One of the first things that you're going to see is this custom background. So to do that, you go into the page layout. We'll delete the background for now. And you'll see that, of course, our grid lines have been turned off. So here's your traditional Excel background look. So all we would need to do is go into the view and hide those grid lines. We don't need to see them. Go into the page layout. I've chosen a custom background, which I have. So we'll browse for it. I've got one right here and I've got some pictures here in a folder. So I've got a cement floor PNG file. So we're going to insert that. So that's going to give us that nice custom background that we are looking at. All we do for our title, we simply have a text box here. I've got a logo that I've created here. Nothing too impressive about that generally. And also we've got some admin columns. Columns A and B are used for admin. I want to know the difference when an order is loading. Now, why would I do that? Now, when an order loads, it's going to go from true to false. You can kind of see it there when the order loads. Now, why would we do that? Why would we want to know the difference between when an order loading or not? And that is because we make some changes. For example, I want to know when we make a certain change. Like if I'm making a change to Let's say I want to change this to Bay 3. I'm not going to allow that kind of change because Bay 3 is already occupied, right? So that's the kind of change event that we want to make sure that I won't save those changes. I want to make sure that I differentiate between some changes. So we use order load to do that. We differentiate between a change that the user is actually making manually or the change when the actual job or quote or order is being loaded up. So we need to differentiate that. As you remember, inside our order database, we have a unique ID called order ID for every single order. When I select an order, I need to know what ID has been selected. We can see that it's right up in here. If we move over, we can see it here. It's U4, but U4 is linked to B2. So B2 is always going to contain our order ID. I also want to know the database row that's associated with that. So for example, 
order number four is located on row seven. So I need to know that. So what I've done is I've created a named range called order ID. If we go into the formulas in the name manager, we're gonna look at one called order ID. So we're gonna scroll down here and we've used an offset formula. This is the dynamic named range. As our data grows, our named range will grow as well. So if we tab into it, we see that the dancing ants are gonna be around that data. So we're using offset formula, count A. We do it in almost every single training, if you followed me before. Now I've got a basic training on named ranges and where we go over really detail on that. And that's in our VBA basic series. So we've created that named range, which is gonna help us. If I take that named range and I look look up order ID using the match formula looking in B2 and I look inside that order ID range I want to know what row now the reason I'm adding three is because our order ID start on row four so what I want to do is I want to return the row number that it's associated. I know it's on database row that's important because if I'm going to either save information to that given row or I'm gonna load information from that given row into all these fields, I need to know what row, so very important. When I create a brand new order, we're gonna clear out the order there. I'm gonna put the next order ID. Now notice order ID number 10 is here. I've taken the next order ID, which we're gonna use the max formula to get. So I'm gonna look in the order IDs. You see our order IDs are up to nine. If I take the maximum, which is nine, and I add one, I'm gonna to get to 10. 10, of course, is not entered there, so there's no row that's associated with order ID 10. Therefore, it's going to return an error inside this formula. It's not going to find order ID 10. So if there's an error, it's going to return empty. And that's exactly what I want. So when I save this, it's going to say, oh, look, there's no row that's associated. It must be a new order. And then what it's going to do, it's going to sign a brand new row for this. So that means when I decide I'm going to add a customer here, a given customer, I see that this customer has no vehicles. So I will create a brand new vehicle for that Toyota Camry. I'll give it a color here, red, and we'll just use uh, anything for the license. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this vehicle. That vehicle is now located for the customer. I can load it up and I can give it an issue tire check. I can add pictures if I want. If I decide I want to add a picture, I can do just that here and click OK. It's going to add that picture. We'll be able to display that picture. And of course, I can assign a bay if I want to, or I can keep it as, and I can then add information here. If I want to add parts on a quote, maybe it's going to be a quote that we need to give the customer. And I can set a specific uh, part here and I can set a specific labor here. So once we do that, it's going to add that brand new order to a row. When we click save and update, it's going to add that. The order has been saved. Our message shows up. We now look inside the order ID. We now see that order ID number 10 has been assigned to row 13 and all the information got saved. We now look back into this and we see that the database row is now 13. So it's been saved. The next order ID is going to be at 11. As we see, this grows. And on whether we're going to show pending or not, this particular box here, in fact, I'm going to expand that so we can click on it here, about like that. So what I want to know is I want to know whether we're showing pending. If we only show pending orders, this is selected. If I unselect it, it's going to show all the orders for a given date if the date is here, or it's going to show all orders completely if there's no date here. And so to do that, we want to make sure that this is linked to a particular cell. So I've got a checkbox here. When we click the format control, we can see that it's unchecked and it's linked to B5. Now, if we were going to enter that brand new, all I would do is go into the developer. I would go into the insert format controls and this checkbox here, and I'd add it here. And then what I did is I don't necessarily like the font here. So I'm not using this text here. So I just kept that blank. And what I did is I put the text behind it. So notice in cell D5 is where I'm placing the text because I don't really like that. So I just kind of placed it over. And then all I did was simply format control and then link to a given cell. So that's it. It's just going to show simply true or false. So that's all that that is. Great. So that's going to be important whether we're showing it because that's going to help us in the filter. Next up is a customer ID. As we have individual customers here that we're going to select, I want to know the ID that's associated with a given customer. If we look inside our customer database, we see that each customer has a unique ID, name and address and information. So if I want to know, I want to ensure that one, the customer has an ID, I want that ID to travel through the orders. Notice the orders have a customer ID. Why is this important? Because if we decide to change a customer name, a customer name can change, right? So when I want to look up information about a given customer, I'm going to look up the ID because the ID will never change. So even if the name changes here, 
the ID won't change, and that's kind of important. So we want to keep the ID. Just like we have a vehicle, the model of the vehicle might change, but I do want to track it based on a vehicle ID. So it's always important to use the ID, not just the name of the information, not just the name of the record number or customer name or vehicle or whatever. We do want to store those unique IDs because they won't change even if the name does change. So what I want to do is I want to grab that customer ID. I want to look up the name and I want to determine what is the customer ID of Frank Costanza. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create some named ranges, which we did. So if I look in formulas, and we look in the name manager once more and i look in the customer i see that again there's a customer id just as with the order ids i've also created a dynamic named range for the customer ids based on that and we also have another one for customer names so both customer names and customer id have those dynamic named range so knowing that we have those two named ranges we can use the index function to extract the ID from a given customer. And of course, we're going to wrap it on if error in case there's an error. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the index function. What I want, I want to look up the customer ID, but I need to determine what is the row number of that. To get the row number, we're simply going to look what's in L3. That's the customer that's been selected. We're going to look in the customer names and I want an exact match. So this is going to return our row. So if we highlight over this, we see that it's row 10. So we can see row 10. So we know index customer ID, row 10, and a single column here. And that's going to get us whatever is located inside that, which is 10. Our customer ID is 10. So we have a customer ID. And now what I want to do is I want to know the database row that's associated for that customer. We can look up two ways. We can look up the customer name or we can look up the customer ID. So I'm going to take the name here and I'm going to determine what row it is. This time we're just simply going to use the match formula. Again, we're looking up the customer name. We're looking inside the name range customer names. I want an exact match. We're adding three because our customers start on row four. So we need to add three. If we look down in here, we see that Frank Costanza, if we look back in our customers, we see that Frank Costanza is located on row 13, our customer ID 10, row 13. And that's exactly what I want, customer ID 10 on row 13. I also want to know the next customer ID. We have the ability to add new customers, which is kind of nice. So we can clear out the existing customer and I can add another one frida fredders and i don't need any other information i can save that customer and it's going to automatically add that brand new customer if we take a look inside the customers we see that customer id 12 has been added with no additional information so very very helpful frida fredders is now available here inside our customer and it is automatically sorted inside that which is kind of helpful so we can select it and then that, that is uh, Fred's wife. Okay, so we have that here. So the customer information is very helpful for adding, updating, and saving existing customers. I also want to know the order type. Now, the order type is either a quote or estimate or sales order. So we can see here that this is going to change. So we have these options. If we were to enter these new options, all I would do, again, go back into the developer here. I would go to insert, and I would just insert this option button here. And that's all I did right here. So I've got the option button here. Again, I remove the text because I don't really like the text and I just use the text behind the cell. So I removed all the text. What I did is I used the text inside here. We have quote or estimate. So that's the text inside Q2. And I used also the text inside S2 for that. So the text behind it is what we're using. This text is not really customizable and I want the font to be the same exact as we have throughout the workbook. So that's all I did there. Now, of course, when we do create these, we need a cell that's linked. Let's get rid of this here and we'll delete that. And what I want to do is I want to go into that and show you that linked cell. So if we select on any one of the options and we go into the format control, it's linked to B9. Now, since we only have two options here, the change is going to be from one. So this is one. So we see the order type changes from one. And if I select sales order, it's going to be two. I've also got a macro attached to this, which we'll be going over. And also I want some text. Notice this changes to sales order. So this is going to be located what's in 04. So we see here inside sales order, but I want the uppercase so we're using the upper of whatever's in 04 and that means if we were to change it this should be a really drop down list between quote or estimate but this takes care of it i'll probably change that so let's do that right now so we're going to have a data data validation because i really just want two options we're going to list those and the first one is going to be quote and the second one's going to be sales order 
and we'll get rid of the space there order so that's all i really want quote or sales order and click ok so that way the user has multiple ways and we see some car samples here which we'll be going over so now what we can see is we have a sales order or we have quote now we're going to update that now when we change that we need to make sure that it also this option changes here to quote so we'll be going over that as well okay we have a status now we see that the status here we want to go over that well i was going to go over here one so what i want to do is i want to look inside this order type if this order type is one we're going to do quote otherwise we're going to do sales order now we see that this order text is going to be linked so let's link this to b10 i'm just going to link it equals to b10 because i've already created it so it's a little bit easier that's automatically going to link there we go so it's going to have the same end up effect but we want to make sure it's there so this text is going to help us out i like this a little bit better it should be say order text not test here so it's text i want individual text for the order here located inside q3 okay very good so last up bay occupied i'll go over this in a little bit it's a little bit more of a complex formula and basically what we need to do is that if i'm trying to add something to a bay number that's already occupied this is going to go to true it's going to tell us it's occupied when it's true it's not going to allow us so that's kind of important that we have that there so we need to know whether a base has been occupied. So that's a formula. Just like we have customers, I have a vehicle ID, a database row, and a next vehicle. Because we are also able to add vehicles. So if I've selected a vehicle here, whatever vehicle has been selected, I want an ID. I want the database row and I want the next vehicle ID. So again, just like we have everything else, we see that there's a lot of patterns here because everything is programmed the same way. Once you get good at this, you're able to create extensive databases and applications in no time at all. So this one took me about two days to create. So we're gonna go into the formulas name manager and inside vehicles, just as you can imagine, we have a named range dynamic for our vehicle ID. So that's it, that's all we need is just vehicle ID, easy enough. And what that's going to do is it's gonna allow us to create a database row for whatever vehicle ID is placed here. So simply again, using the match formula based on whatever's in B18, that is our vehicle ID, name range, vehicle ID, adding three, it's gonna get us that row that the vehicle's associated on. Important because I'm gonna load this vehicle information into these fields, I need to know what database row is associated with this so that I can load the model color and the notes for the given vehicle into these fields. And just like we have, we can save the vehicle, we can clear the information out for a vehicle that allows us to add a new one. We can select an existing vehicle. It's gonna load up the vehicles. I can put in individual issues as we had mentioned. Next up, we got some pictures. I wanna know the selected row. If I select a picture, I wanna know what row has been selected. That's gonna be conditional formatting. That row is gonna go right here inside B29. And also I wanna know the profit percentage. So that profit percentage next up here, simply equal to 029 divided by 025. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that we're going to take a look at our total profit divided by our total build here, and it's going to get us our profit margin. So our profit margin here, we've built out 1,100. Our total profit is 452. So we have a 40% profit margin. It's going to be very helpful for this little donut chart here that we've created. Okay, so that kind of goes through our admin, what we've got on our admin, relatively basic on there, not a whole lot going on here. So next up, what I want to do is let's go over the basics of how we create these orders. So notice we've got some orders here. We've got a lot of information. That's the first database that we're going to go over. Now we've mapped some data. We've got a lot of data inside here, right? There's a lot of information that I want to save for a given order, and we're going to save it all inside this database. So what we want to do is we want to map the fields, and that means customer ID, is going to be located in b6 so if we take a look inside b6 we see that the customer id is associated inside here if we look at the vehicle id we see the vehicle id is located in b18 that's also going to be matched b18 and the customer name l3 so if we look inside l3 we see that the customer name is located here so all that information is what i want to save that's very important so how do we do that well we want to make sure that we're going to map the data and that means when we save the information we're going to then look at whatever's inside these fields and we're going to save it to the given row or if it's a brand new one, we're gonna save it to a new row. So to do that, we need to use some macros to help us do that. So we want a loop and we're gonna go all the way to the last column. Now, what is this last column? This is column 28. So if we equals column 28. Okay, so we have column 28. So I need to loop all the way to there. But keep in mind that this, now if we're gonna take that total, where's that total coming from? If we take a look 
inside the map data we see it's v36 so we take a look inside v36 here and we see we've got a total right here what i want to do is i want to take this total and i do want to place it directly in whatever row here however when i'm loading the information up meaning all this information is going to be loaded inside this field i don't want to put the total here why would i not want to bring the total from the database into here because this is a formula i would never want to replace the data with a formula because this is automated so it's one way meaning this total is saved inside the database but when i want to load the information i wouldn't load this total so what we want to do is when we load it we only want to load selective fields and i don't want to load the customer id the customer id is also calculated if i take a look in the workshop here we see the customer ids here that's based on a formula right so we're not going to bring the customer and place the customer id here inside b6 however the vehicle id is not calculated so notice there is no formula so in this case we would so i'm just differentiating between which fields we load up the information so we're going to go over that now i'm going to go into the macros that help us save those orders so let's take a look under the hood and see how we make this magic happen so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the developer tab if you don't have the developer tab you can right click customize the ribbon and just select on the developer tab inside the developer tab you're going to find the visual basic you can also use the shortcut alt f11 to get there once you do that you're going to open up the application and we see we've got several sheets here all of our sheets and we've got some modules we've got four different modules i've got customer macros order macros vehicle macros and vehicle picture macros we're going to start on the order macros as we go through this so now we're going to go through this from top to bottom so we can see exactly how everything works the first of which is an order list so as you see the order list this is the macro that's going to populate this the macro that we run when every time we clear this it's going to auto populate or when we run this there's a macro that's tied to this button so if we click assign macro we see it's called order list so that is the same macro that goes over now when do we want to run this macro well of course we want to run this macro when one we save any new order because there could be new information that we populate or new orders when we select on this we want it when we run a filter or clear a filter we need to run it so there's several instances in which we want to run this macro now the idea behind this macro is we are going to run it as a filter so for example if i select today's orders we're going to use an advanced filter inside this macro we're going to take our order database i'm going to take all the information from this order we're going to run it through some criteria and that criteria is right here we're going to take the results of that which is here and we're going to bring them over into the auto worksheet first thing we want to do is i want to clear out all the information now inside column c notice when i select a lot of files i don't want anything to happen but something's happening i'm going to show you how to avoid that in just a moment column c does contain some important information however it has been hidden so first we're going to unhide it i'm just going to select general and that's going to unhide it what is showed is the actual order ids now those order ids accompany the orders here however there's no need to see them so we've hidden them in order to hide them all we would need to do is in this case i can select on the entire column if i want to and we're going to go into general and then what i'm going to do is go into the more number formats i'm going to go into the custom and i'm going to use two semicolons now if there's text involved alphanumeric letters i would use three semicolons but since there's numbers only, I would use two semicolons. So I'm gonna click OK, and they're gonna be hidden. I'm gonna use Control Z. I'm gonna undo that action right now. Because I want for the training, I would want you to see the individuals. And so what happens is I want all the information, including those order IDs, the customer, the vehicle, and the status, and I wanna bring them all into this sheet. So we need those coming from our results, and that's gonna come from our orders database here. So we have the order ID, customer name the vehicle model and the status all prepared here so these are the results of our advanced filter but the first step what we want to do is of course clear out any results that might be here starting located in c7 all the way through f and a large row so that's what we're going to do the first step inside our macro inside this module i've got a bunch of variables that have been named long variables so we'll be going over them as we go through them so as mentioned our auto worksheet this is the auto worksheet that's the code name if you want to change the code name you could click on any sheet go to the properties here oops i got them way over here and you can change the name that's auto worksheet so back into our order macros here that's the sheet name i want to clear out all the information as i mentioned c7 through f in a large row clear out existing order list so we want to do that first next up we're going to turn our focus to the order database order db 
That is the name for our order database. We're gonna run the advanced filter. In order to run an advanced filter, I wanna determine the last row. We're gonna take that data from A3 all the way to the last row, all the way to the new column, and we're gonna run an advanced filter based on that. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Determine the last row, which is a long variable that we've mentioned up here. Can you get that information? If for some reason that is less than four, we can exit the set. That means there's no order data and we can just get out. We are going to then run an advanced filter based on that first header a3 all the way through a b which is our last column and the last row so this is the full data set i'm going to run an advanced filter and i want to copy that information excel filter copy to another location inside the worksheet but before we do that we're going to set some criteria now that criteria has been set right here located in a g all the way through a h now let's take a look at some of this now notice that this is linked it says service date so notice that this says service date so it's been specifically linked to e3 and that means if i were to change this to vehicle model or something like that it's automatically going to be changed inside our d so let's just do toyota so we can see our toyota camrys so we can filter by any type of thing so if we look back inside we see that we are now filtering based on vehicle model and we're going to look for any type of vehicle model that includes the word toy so very helpful so to do that we need some formulas so first of all i want to know if it's blank blank if for some reason it's blank like for example if i were to clear the filter if it's blank i just want to set the default as an order id and then does not equal empty and that's going to ensure that all the orders so that means if it's blank i want to set it to order id and if it's also blank i want to set this to does not equal empty and so let's take a look at this so if the auto worksheet equals blank we're going to set it to ae2 what's in ae2 it's right here order id why am I using that field? Because that field is required for every single order. So it's a good one to use to ensure that all of the data gets listed and there's no orders that are being filtered out. And again, if it's blank, what I want to do is I want to set this to does not equal empty. So basically it's going to look at all the orders and it's going to return all the orders in which the order ID is not empty, which is basically every single order. Okay, so we have that. So this one, there's only a small difference in this formula. And the reason why it's so big is because I want to differentiate. For example, if it's a date filter, I want something that matches the exact date. However, if it's like a vehicle name, just as you saw, I want to put asterisks on before and after. And I want to do that in the formula. So let's take a quick look back. Now we see service data. This is the date 45329. If I were to type this in here, 45329. And I want to change the format of that to a date format. We're going to see that it is the current date. So we're going to do that right here under the short date we see that it is february 7th 2024 which is the date that i'm recording this but we always want to use especially in filters the actual number that it helps ensure especially when you have different regionals different date formats it's always a good idea when using filters to use the date id so we're doing that the actual number of the date so we're looking for a specific service date of this so we see that this is an exact match so what i want to do is i want to look up some information for example if it is a order id or if it's a service date, maybe order total, but uh, I want to make sure in those cases that it, we're looking for an exact match. So we're going to use the or command. If the E3 is equal to E4 here, so service date or order ID, we could probably put order total too, but probably order two. So we could add that in. Let's do E4 equals. So how do we do that? I want to make sure if or equals empty or equals empty then we're just going to show does not equal so here it is auto worksheet ae2 if e3 equals ae2 which is here or e3 equals a6 service data order id in those cases we want to show exactly what's in e4 i'm going to add one more to that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this part right here and i'm going to use it for order total because i also want to include order total so if it equals order total in that case i want exact match so we're going to select so now in any one of those instances we're not going to use the asterisks which is the wild card i want to use those wild cards for string type of data customer name vehicle model type status those are all string types alphanumeric so we want to use that so in other words for the order id for the service date and for the order total i want to show only the exact match however if it's a string here's the comma then we're going to use the asterisk the wild card before then we're going to show whatever the user has entered then the asterisk so that's what we're going to do there so that's how we differentiate again let me show you one more time right if we're searching by a vehicle model and we're going to just enter toyota toi right just to show you one more time so it's going to show again the asterisk before and after so we're filtering out also we want to filter by status right now if we remember here i've got show only pending here 
we see that this is connected to B5. So if it's pending, B5 is either going to change to true or false. So we know that if B5 equals true, we're only going to show those pending orders. So back inside, I want to show if B5 equals true, show pending, otherwise show all, both all statuses. So that's going to take our status, it's going to show only pending. So when we run through this criteria, we're simply looking for vehicle models that contain TOI and those that are only pending of status. So that is exactly how. Then we have the results come here. So we see how we've done that. So we can clear that filter out and we can undo that and it's going to show all of that. So our results are going to come directly here. Once we have the results, we're going to bring it in. So let's go back into our macro. We see that our criteria is AG2 through AH3. It's right here. And our results are going to come AK2 through AN. And also, once our results come, I want to determine what is the last row of our results. So in this case, our last results row is 12. So I want to put those last results row into a long variable called last results row. And we're going to pull it from column AK. If it's less than three, we're going to exit the sub. That means there is no data. I want to sort that data. I want to put the newest order on top. However, if there's just one row of results, that means the last result row is less than four. We don't need to sort a single row so we can skip the sort. However, if there's more than one row, we are going to run that sort. So to do that, we're going to clear the sort. We're going to add a key. That key is going to be which do we want to sort by that first row of data, which is AK3. Since I want to sort newest to oldest, I want to sort descending order IDs. So we're sorting those order IDs and we're using descending. And we're going to set the range from AK3 through AN in the last results row. It's going to set the range and we're going to apply the sort. Once it's been sorted, I'll bring in reverse, you see all the way down there. We can then take that information and we can bring it into the sheet. So C7 through F in the last results row plus four. Remember our data here starts on row three. Our data here starts on row seven. So we need to compensate for that simply by adding four to do that. So basically we're transferring data from the list and bringing it into this list. Very good. So we see that and that is the macro that we've just gone over. So that's going to run that macro. I'll go over some of the macros that we see when we run it, but we see that we've already attached it to this. So now we have a macro called order list today's job. So that's the macro that's been tied to this button. If I right click any individual shape within the group of buttons and I click assign macro, we see that we have order list today's job. So that's a relatively simple macro. All I need to do is I need to set E3 to service date. Now make sure that the service date is exactly the same name as the header, which is this header here, making sure that we have that. Now we see here, we've got a named range, a bunch of information. How do we go about getting that? If I go into the data and data validation, it's called a name range called search by. Now search by is this list here. So again, I basically taken all the data headers and I've put it into this list here and it's called search by. So it's just this list here and that's the data validation. So we can do search by. So inside today, all I basically want to do is put this to service date and whatever the search is, I want to put the current date inside E4. So E3 is going to take on that service date. E4 is going to take on the date. That's all I have to do. You're saying, well, how do you run the filter? You only put two informations here. That filter is going to run on a change event. So let's put into this date two seven. So as soon as that's changed, it is going to run that filter. And that's going to be a change event on E4. So when I make a change, we're going to check. How do we do that? Again, it's a change event. So we're going to go directly into the worksheet code and we're going to look it up. Now, if I want to go inside here, I've got selection change and I'm going to add something before I forget on the selection change. Remember when I select a bunch of things, I really don't want anything to happen. I only want something to happen when I make a single selection. So how do we avoid that? We can use if target dot count large, meaning the number of cells that you select is greater than one. When you select more than one cell, then exit sub. So that means if the user selects more than one cell, then exit the sub. Now, when I select more than one cell, nothing will happen. Only when I select a single cell, do I want something to happen? Okay. So that's going to be helpful. So back inside our change, event, we're going to go up when we make a change, something is going to happen. When we make a change to what cell I'm focused on cell E4. So we're going to look down here on search order change. If not intersection E4, meaning when we make a change to E4, something's going to happen. We want to run the macro. That's the macro that we just went over, orders list. So that's all we need to do. So simply when we make a change to E4, it is automatically going to trigger the macro. And to enter the current date, I simply use today. That is the current date. So that's all we need to do. When we clear the filter, exactly the same is going to happen. Again, I'm going to simply take E3 and F4 and clear the contents. 
changing E3, actually E4, which is included in here, is going to automatically trigger the macro. Clearing that, this is the macro for a right click assign the macro we see it's called clear filter that's the macro that we were just going over here those is automatically going to trigger the macro that's going to re-clear the list so very very helpful on that okay next up is the add new when i add a new word i want to basically do two main things i want to clear the associated fields and i want to set some defaults like i want to set the service date to the current date I want to set a, a default estimate or sales order quote or whatever it's going to be and i want to set some defaults here so that's all we're going to do. We're going to grab those defaults from here. I want the labor and markup defaults. So that means we can individually change the markup. If I decide I'm going to make this 50% for this job and I want to add part here, air filter, and its amount is 155. The cost is going to be actually here. So we're going to mark up this by 50%, so 155. So we've marked up that part. Oh, sorry. Uh, parts markup is 50. Okay, so let's just do it again. Let's change the parts. It's just correct. So now let's say I double click on here. I'm going to change it. So now the amount is 160. Okay, cool. So our cost is 100. We've marked it up 60%. We're changing it to 160. That's what we're selling it for. Now our cost is hidden, of course, when we print this out, but it's important to know those costs. So it's very helpful to have our cost of those parts and our sales amount is 160. We've marked it up 60% and our labor, which is 50%. So when I do select the labor here, and then we could select any particular technician here. We see that the cost of this technician is $43 if we're going to mark it up 50%. So it's going to be $21.50. And then we're going to add $21.50 on to that to get our total label sales. Our cost is $43. 50% on that is $64.50. Very helpful. So we can customize those. But we have some defaults that are helpful. That's going to set those defaults come here. So those defaults are going to be used for new orders. So let's take a look back inside here. And we see that we're going to be clearing out a bunch of fields first of all we're going to set the order load to true b1 is going to go to true it's going to go back to false i want to clear out a bunch of fields i want to set the next order id if we remember correctly inside column b in b4 we already have that next order id based on a max formula here all i'm going to do is i'm going to take that next order ID. i'm going to place it directly inside b2 and that is because I want that next order ID to show up right here. And it is already linked to B2. Very, very helpful for that. I want to set that service date. 03 is going to take on the current date. I want to set the default here. We see the order date here already linked to that. Very helpful there. And then next up, I want to set our order type, order status, payment type, manager, default markup, and default all of this information is based on whatever is inside the admin. So all we're doing is taking these defaults, taking all these new order defaults, and we're placing them inside the individual cells here, 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 and here. So that's all we're doing here, just placing them in there in the defaults. Okay, I also want to clear the validation. Now, this is a little bit interesting, right? We see we've got data validation here. I've got a list of technicians here. I've got a list of parts here, which is kind of nice, right? However, I don't have any data validation here. But when I do select a part, it's going to be a list of parts. When I select labor here, a list of technicians, which is kind of helpful. But what I want to do is I want to just clear out all the data validation. For here, when we have a new order, if I click a new order here, I want to just clear out all so that there's no data validation until the user selects something. So that's going to be very, very helpful to do that. Okay, so we want to clear out that data validation. Let's continue back on a new order. So we're clearing out the data validation R9 through R33, R9 through R33. We're clearing any data validation to do that. We're going to use this here. And I also want to delete any picture that might exist for the vehicle. If I've selected a vehicle here and I've selected a picture here, let's find one with a picture here. This one, the picture is always going to have a specific name called vehicle picture. And I want to make sure that that picture gets deleted when I create a brand new order. So to do that, we're going to delete it. If the picture does not exist, it could create an error. So we've wrapped it in on error, resume next, and on error, go to zero. And lastly, B1 set to false. Okay, very good. So that's all we need to do for new order. Now, here's one, we have order type change. If I take a look at this here or this, I've got a macro sign to both of them. There's some things that I want to do. If I select this or select this, I wanna make sure that things change. I want this to change here inside 04. And I want this to change. So how do we do that? So notice 04 is going to change based on that. So if I right click here and click assign macro here, we see it's called order type change. That's the macro that I wanted to go over with you. So basically if B9 equals one, then 04 equals quote, else 04 equals sales order. So basically all it's going to do is just look in here 
at B9, which is either one or two. If it's two, we're gonna put in sales order. If it's one, we're gonna put in quote. So it's relatively simple macro, it's gonna change on that. Okay, very good. So now that we have that, actually what I want to do here, I wanna copy this. There's one small issue. When I load an order, let's take a look at this. Let me just see if I can find the issue here. Quote, 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 quote. So let's say sales order. I don't think it almost comes up. It's almost always correct. But what I wanted to do is when we load an order, I want to ensure that this is always correct. I'll double check that a little bit later on as we go through the macro, but I think it's good. When we load an order, what do we need? Well, there's different ways to load an order. I can select here, it's gonna load an order. I can select a car, it's gonna load an order, which is kind of nice. So there's a few methods to load an order. So to do that, I need to know that order ID. And most importantly, I need to know that there's a row that is associated with that database without that row that's associated i would not be able to load that order so the first thing we need to do is get that so to do that we're going to use this macro called order load so when i select on a car we click assign macro we see that it's called vehicle select when i make a selection change on this we're also going to load that so let's go into the selection change event right before which is going to lead us directly to this macro so we're going to go into the auto worksheet we're going to scroll down for selection change event which is down here and on order selection if the user makes a selection from d7 through f and I want to make sure that D contains a value, right? If they select in that range, but there's nothing inside D, I don't want anything to happen. So we want to make sure that D contains a value. If it does, then we're going to do a few things. I'm going to take that order ID that's located in column C, whatever the row that they've selected, and I'm going to place that directly inside B2. What that's going to do is going to calculate the database row located in B3. So we're going to do that. B2 is going to take on whatever's in C it's going to set that order then we're going to run the macro that's the macro that i wanted to go over with you but that's how it triggers okay so that's the macro called order load so inside this what we're going to do is we're going to set b1 to true and of course before we finish it we're going to set b1 to false so all the way down here at the end okay we'll go over that so first thing what i want to do is i want to clear a bunch of fields so we're clearing out a bunch of fields again i want to delete any validations in column r i want to delete any picture for a vehicle that might exist and i want to make sure that we actually have a row without that row we're going to be in trouble so we want to make sure if b3 is empty for any reason that means we don't have a correct row so we can let the user know if b3 is equal empty please enter a correct order number to load we're going to set b1 to false and we're going to exit the sub okay very good so continuing on we also want to set that order row into a long variable this is the order database row so we're going to write that here order database row once we have that i want to turn off application screen updating that'll make things faster however before we exit the macro we must then turn it on. We're gonna run that loop, as I'd mentioned to you, from three to 27. Here's where the data mapping comes in handy. We're gonna start in column three. Remember, customer IDs are calculated. We don't wanna start in column two, so we're starting in column three. We're gonna go all the way to 27, which is this one right here. We don't wanna load in the total because the total is calculated. We're gonna go all the way to here. So basically, we're gonna look inside the row. We're gonna put whatever's in that row inside 020 or 021. We're simply gonna take the values and place them directly inside. And that's called data mapping. I've got dedicated trainings directly on data mapping, one for worksheets and now one for user forms last week. So we're simply basically going to look inside the order database. We're looking in row one of the column. We're gonna look for the range. What is the range here? Is it 01, 02? So let's pull that up again. I'm looking inside row one. I'm looking for these individual ranges. So once I get that, I'm gonna take whatever's inside the actual order row and the actual order column, and I'm gonna place it directly inside this range, inside our auto worksheet. We're simply gonna loop through that. And that's how we can take all of this data, you know, 28 rows of data, and we can put them all inside a worksheet, but we're only using three rows of writing code so three rows of vba code can equal lots and lots so it's very very helpful to add a lot of data using data mapping once we have loaded up all the information for this and all of these populated we still need to populate the individual items inside our order however many they are and to do that we're going to use another advanced filter we do know that our order id is located inside b2 so if we switch to our order items database we have all the items so basically what I want to do is I want to extract only the items that are associated with a given order. So these are for one, these are for two, and so on and so forth. So we need to create another advanced filter and we need to base it on the order ID. So we see we've got the order ID 
and our criteria here, and it's based on B2. We then want to extract that information, and I want those results to come directly here. I'm going to take those results, and I'm going to bring them directly inside our order here. We're going to bring in all the information. Now, we're not going to bring in the total because that's calculated. I'm not going to bring in the total cost because that's also calculated. So these are formulas here. So we wouldn't want to upset these. All I need to do is bring in this information and our total will be calculated. All I need to do is bring in the cost and our total is calculated. Our total is calculated based on the quantity and the cost. Our total is calculated based on the quantity and the amount. And of course, we need to know what row to place it. Are we placing it on row nine or 10? I want to make sure that we're placing it in the row in which we saved it. So that is called the order row. So we're gonna bring that inside of, from our order database. So we have the database row, which is the database row here, and we have the item row, which is nine and 10. So we're gonna bring all that information in, and it all starts with an advanced filter. So inside now, we're focusing on this order items database. We're gonna determine the last row here. If it's less than four, we're gonna skip the items. We don't need to go, we can get out of there. And we're gonna run that advanced filter based on A3. We're gonna use our criteria R2 through R3. The results are gonna come x2 through a2 determine the last result row of x if for some reason it's less than three that means we have no items in that order which is certainly possible and if we do have that then what we're going to do is we're going to run a loop for three all the way to the last row we're going to run a loop i want to get the database row and i know what row to place it in so that's exactly what we're going to do that item row is where we're going to put it inside the order it's coming from column AE as we see that item row. We're going to take the information. I'm going to put the product name, the ID, and the amount directly into our auto worksheet. Q through U equals X through AB. So what does that mean? That means X through AB. That means the part, the tech, and quantity hours is going to bring directly inside here all the way from Q all the way through U. Remember that total is not going to be touched. Lastly, we just need to enter the cost in one row and then the database row in another. So the cost is going to take here in one more line. W is going to take on whatever's in AC. And also column Y, which is our database row, is going to come from AD. So we're simply populating column Y or populating column W. And it's going to come directly from here. Here's our cost AC or AD. So we're simply populating the last two columns of data. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to update the validation. In other words, I want to look inside here. If this is a part, I want to make sure that we change this to parts. If this is labor, I want to change the data validation to labor or update it. So that's all we need to do as we loop through that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look inside column x so we're looking directly inside our order set. i'm looking column x if this says part i want to update this here to our data validation parts if we look in the formulas let's look at the two lists and we look at parts name i've got a list of part name here so it's going to be helpful so that's our data validation i've also got a list of tech names so if we take a look in here tech names so these are the names of our technicians so we want a drop down list using either one of those and it's going to be based on our order items database so if this is part it's going to be parts name if this is labor it's going to be tech name so we can do that it's going to be based on what's located in x if x equals part then we're going to set the data validation r in the item row validation we're adding a validation type list uh, we're using stop and we're basically going to set the formula to parts name here otherwise it would be labor right it will too far so otherwise it's labor so let's just put in labor so it's labor we're setting it the named range to tech so we can see here tech name so this is our formula so we can take a look inside the data validation just take a quick look and then we see the data validation is basically parts name or here it is tech name so we get the idea so that's all we're doing now you also saw me do so when we make a change to here automatically we see that here it's been changed so how do we do that so that's going to be on the change event so while we're on this data validation i can show you almost the exact same right here and that's going to be on the change event so we go into the auto worksheet we're looking at change event remember worksheet change and we're going to look an on item type change update the parts or labor data but not on order load right meaning when b1 is true we don't want it only when b1 is false so we need to ensure that b1 is false so if the user makes a change to q9 through q33 meaning a change to here and we want to make sure that the change is not empty and we also want to make sure that the order is not loading so q must not be empty 
NB1 must be false. The order must not be loading. Inside that, what are we going to do? The first thing what I'm going to do is whatever the column to the right is in the same row, we're going to delete the validation. So any change, um, first thing I'm going to do is delete the validation because I cannot add a validation unless I've already deleted the current validation. We can't add a validation on top of another one. So the first thing we're going to do is delete it R in the target row, validation delete. The next up, what I want to do is I want to clear all the contents, right? I want to make sure that anytime we make a change here, I want to make sure that everything really needs to be cleared. If I change this to part, I want to clear everything out. That's kind of important because we've got to change a lot. So clear everything out. And that means all the way from R through U. And I also want to clear out W. So we're clearing all of that out here. So R through U and w so both of that information gets cleared out now what we're going to do if it's a part we're simply updating the validation just like we did otherwise it's a labor and we're updating the validation so that's all we need to do there when we user makes a change it's automatically going to be added in here so labor again the drop down list now is for technicians very very cool so we see how that works on both the chains but now what we're doing is we're updating it on load so when we load it we also want to do that very good continuing on with loading them so we've loaded all the items and now what we want to do is i want to run a macro called vehicle customer load i want to know all the vehicles that are associated with a given customer if i've chosen a customer here when we load that order i want to know all the vehicles loaded now why is this in a separate macro it's kind of nice it's in a separate macro because i also want to run that macro when we run the save vehicles for example if i decide to add a brand new vehicle so let's say lexus and then black right if i want to add a black lexus i want to update this list also when a new vehicle is added if i save that vehicle i want to make sure that it gets added here so that's very important that we have a separate macro for that so this separate macro loading the vehicles let's just take a quick look at that what we're going to do is going to right click and go to definition that's going to bring us inside our vehicle macros now with this relatively simple macro all we essentially want to do is extract the vehicles for any given customer so first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we have a customer id we have to have a customer ID in order to load the vehicles for a given customer. So that means if for any reason there is no customer ID in B6, we could exit the sub. It is that customer ID that we're going to be using as our criteria to extract the vehicles. So inside our vehicles database, it is that customer ID located in B6, which we are going to be using. Then results, the vehicle ID are going to come here. We are going to create basically a name. I want to combine the model and the color. If we notice in the auto workshop, we see inside our view, we have red for Mustang or red Nissan. So we're going to take the color and the model and can combine them for a vehicle name. So to do that, we need a, just a small little formula to help us with that. Since there's a maximum of four vehicles per customer, we only need to have a formula that is located right here inside three through six. This one is not necessary in P2. So all we're going to be doing is taking whatever is in n3 and o3 and combining them making sure that we actually have values in both of them and so that means that as long as there's a value in o3 and n3 we are going to take those values and we're going to combine them and put a space there so red ford model red nissan so we're just going to create that then what we're going to do is we're going to take the vehicle id along with the vehicle name here that we've created and we're going to bring those into the auto workshop the vehicle id is going to be hidden it's going to be hidden here inside column m so if we unhide it we have a maximum of four so what i'm going to do is i'm going to highlight those fields we now have a custom field if we change those back to general we see that we have the ids of the vehicles hidden there inside column m if we were to hide it again we go into the more number formats and again change that custom to two semicolons instead of general we we'll use two semicolons and that's going to hide them they are still there if we click on an individual cell we still see that the id is two we still see that this has an id of nine so that's essentially what we want to do so to do that we're going to make sure that we do have a customer id we're going to focus on that vehicle database that is where we're going to run our advanced filter we'll determine the last row and then we'll run the advanced filter so that last row is simply going to be a and excel up and then what we're going to do is if for some reason there's less than that we're going to simply go to no vehicles and skip we could exit the sub at this point as well okay so now what we're going to do is run that advanced filter a3 all the way through e i don't need the notes so we're not including the notes we could just really go through d2 really we don't need the 
license or VN number as well, so that's fine. Our criteria is going to be K2 through K3, and our results are simply going to come through M through O. Though these formulas, sometimes if it's a large amount of data, I'll bring down the formula, but this is the maximum of four vehicles, so the formulas are already here. There's no need to bring them down with VBA. So we're going to determine the last results row in column M, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all the values over. In fact, I probably don't need this. Just to determine there's no vehicles. If the last row is less than three that means there are no vehicles we're just going to skip and go here we get just as easily as exit the sub here and here it's fine it gives us the opportunity to do something else here if we wanted to then it's simply a matter of bringing over the data i want to bring over both the vehicle ids and i want to bring over the vehicles here so to do that we're going to do that in two lines of code the first is we're going to copy over the color in the model so that means p3 through p6 right here is going to move over to l12 through f15 we're simply bringing over four rows of data even if they don't include up to four rows of cars right so if they only have one car we're still going to bring four simply copying over the information l12 through l15 is equal to whatever is located here inside p3 all the way through p6 so we're just bringing that over and lastly we are going to take m three through m6 and bring that over into our hidden column here which is also in column m all the way from m12 through m15 and that's exactly what we're going to do in that second line m12 through m15 is going to take on m3 through m6 and those are the vehicle ids so that's all we really need to do to load a vehicle so that's very very helpful for us to do that once we have loaded in the customer vehicle i also want to load in that selected vehicle that selected vehicle is here whatever vehicle is selected now the selected vehicle information that is part of our work order so that vehicle is very specific to our order and that information of course is going to come in here so we see that we have the vehicle information located right in here we have vehicle model the color the license that's all part of our database so all that gets loaded in but what we want to do is we want to determine what is the one that's selected so how do we know that if we take a look inside our vehicle id b18 is going to load in that so b18 is going to load in our vehicle id and now what we've done is i want to know which one is selected so this is a nice little trick so i know if i take a look here we see that this is nine right so notice that those selected vehicles automatically selected so for example if i select here and notice that we have vehicle three it's automatically selected so how do we do that well we do that with conditional formatting i'm looking in this hidden column here m and see it's 17. And that means if our vehicle ID is also 17. So what I'm doing is I'm looking inside this column and I'm looking for a match. This vehicle ID, remember, it's coming directly from our order database right here. It's coming from here. It's going into B18. So then we load in the vehicles, which I just showed you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a match. Whenever I find that there is a matching vehicle ID here inside column M, and I'm matching 18. Then I'm going to take whatever row it's found on and I'm going to highlight it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go into the home and then I'm going to go into conditional formatting and I'm going to manage the rules. And we're looking for two conditions. One, we want to make sure B18 is not empty. So that's important. And the second condition is B18 equals M12. Now, the most important thing about this is that M and then there must not be a dollar sign before 12 because we want this to apply to every single row starting in row 12 for as long as many rows as it applies to now the applies to starts also in row 12 and goes to 15. so what this is going to do is whenever b18 is not empty and whenever the id in b18 matches whatever's in column m starting at row 12 whenever there's a match it's going to highlight the entire row from k12 through l15 so that's exactly what we've done here highlighted the row based on the match that's here right so we can easily say so notice that this is 14. if i were to change this vehicle id to 14 you see it would change that automatically so that's exactly how we do it so very very helpful for an easy conditional formatting just using one rule so now we're going to load the selected vehicle i want to make sure that we're going to load in the information but actually it's not necessary so i'm going to comment this out why isn't it necessary because this loading is only necessary when i make a selection on a given vehicle if i select this vehicle i want that vehicle information load however when we're loading when i'm running the macro it's all going to come from the order database here the model the color the license it's all going into l17 18 19 and 20. so 
there's no need for me to add this code. I'll it out, right? I don't need to add this. It's already coming from right here. So loading the items inside this section right here. So that's kind of overkill and it's unnecessary. It works just fine without it. So we can just comment this out, probably remove it later. So basically when I load it, you see the vehicle information is still going to load in. You're just fine and the selected vehicles still going to load in perfectly moving on so that's not necessary but we do want to load pictures if necessary and again just like in the vehicle but this time if we notice look in our pictures database it's very simple we have a vehicle id because i want pictures attached to a given vehicle and i want the picture name and the row now theoretically we could add pictures to customers or we could add pictures to order id so that the pictures are given only for a specific order however i kind of thought it would be helpful so that means if the car comes in multiple times the pictures always stay with the car which is kind of nice so that you have a history of any pictures you've taken but they could be order specific as opposed to vehicle specific so just keep that in mind these are only vehicle specific pictures and that means anytime a vehicle comes in for service those pictures are going to be visible once that vehicle has been selected therefore only the vehicle id here is criteria so that means any pictures with the vehicle id one i want those pictures to show up here let's put in the results here and then any results that we have will come in so for example if i select let's take a look vehicle with pictures we'll find it this one has it here so we see that this vehicle that's been selected yellow volkswagen jetta has four pictures associated with it so inside the picture database the vehicle ID is 13. We see that we have different pictures and they're based on the rows. I do want to keep the database rows. This is very important. I'm bringing the database row with the picture name and those database rows will also come into this. And I believe I've put them right here inside column J. They're here. We know how they're hidden. We see them up here. If I select on an individual cell, we see that this is 47. If I select here, we see that this is 48. So we know the database rows are here. And that's important because if I select on a picture and I want to delete or clear the picture, I need to know what database row to clear. And that database row is located right here. So it's very important. So again, we're going to run an advanced filter and bring in those pictures. With the picture database, determine the last row. If it's less than four, we're going to go to no picks. We're just going to skip down here. Run an advanced filter, just as I've mentioned to you before, determining the last row of that. So it's a simple advanced filter, determining the last row and bringing in those pictures. We do need to set a maximum. We don't have unlimited pictures. Here we have seven pictures that we're updating. So we can add up to seven pictures there. So we're simply going to copy over all seven rows of data, whether they're blank or not, and bring them over in for the information. So J through K equals I through J. And that means basically starting right here, J here through K all the way down equals whatever's located inside here. Our results I three all the way down and bring in the pictures in. So once they're brought in, that's it. That's all we have to do. And the rest of this macro, we're going to turn on application screen updating and we're going to set the order load back to false. So that's it. How about when we want to save a work order? Saving the work order, very, very important. We're going to do the same macro regardless of whether we are saving a new work order or whether we are updating an existing work order. We want to make sure that we are going to save all the data. If we remember when we have a new order, the differentiator is going to be that B3. When B3 is empty, we know it is a new work order. We do want to make sure that there are required fields. If I were to try to save an order without a customer, we would let, let the user know. So there are some required fields. Also type and probably status should be required also. Very good. So let's take a look inside the order save update. That is the macro that is tied to this button here. So that's exactly what we're going to go into now. First of all, I want to check for required vehicle and status. If B7 is empty, that means we do not have a customer. B7 is the database row that's tied to a given customer. So if you've added a new customer and you have not saved it, or you have not added any customer at all, B7 will be empty and we'll let the user know to please save or add a customer before saving the order. So we do that. So please add a customer in order to save this order. In order to save this order, I'm not sure if that makes sense. Let's just keep it simple. So now that we have that, now what we want to do, oh, I understand what I was trying to say, in order to save it, just keep it simple. Also, we want to make sure that we have to add a vehicle to the order, right? So we have to have vehicle. The database row that's assigned to that, again, is B19. B19 will tell us if we have not added a vehicle yet, we want to make sure to add a vehicle. So to do that, we check on B19. If it's empty, we're going to add a vehicle 
to save this work order. Please select or add a vehicle. So we can select it or add it. Next up, we we'll wanna make sure that we have a status. Order status is very important because it's gonna let us know lots of things. So we wanna make sure that this is not empty. It's either pending, in progress, or completed. So we wanna have that. If B12 is empty, we're gonna let the user know. Please add an order status before saving. Also, what I wanna know is that B12 is true. This is very important. I'm gonna put, let's just say conflicting bay. As I mentioned to you before, if I try to assign it, this is in progress in bay two, if I change this to bay one, bay one is already occupied. We have a protection here. It's gonna let us know, which I like. And also I have a protection up here inside the save. So there's two multiple protections which will help us to do that. And so if for any reason B12 is true, this is the formula that's gonna help us. So how do we know that? We can might as well get into that formula right now. So to do that, what we're gonna use, we use order status. So let's just take a look at the order status named range because we're gonna be using that inside the formula. So we're gonna go into the formulas, name manager, and we're just gonna take a look at the order status. Okay, and we're gonna see that this order status named range is based on all of the orders. So basically what I want to do is I wanna look at this. I want to look inside this database and I wanna look for everything that is in progress and given a bay. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that there is no two orders that say in progress in bay seven. If it's in progress, there can't be a duplicate. In other words, we see this is bay two. We can't have this, right? I can't have two fields that have in progress and both in the same bay. So that's what we really need to afford. This is completed, so it's fine, right? Bay one, it's already completed, but we can't have two that are in progress in bay two. So that's very important. So that's what I wanna avoid. So what I wanna use is a sum product and it's gonna check for this and it's gonna see is this already taken or not. So let's take a look at the formula and see how we're going to do that. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that if I'm going to use and, oh, it's in progress. So we're really focus only on orders that are in progress, right? So if it's not in progress, it doesn't matter because that means it's not inside a bay. That means it's currently being worked on. So I really want to focus only on that. So that's the first condition. The second condition is the order bay. Let's show this one to you. Formulas name manager order bay I got one more which is based on the order bay so that's the other one so order status and order bay so those are the ones that we're going to use and order id also so we have three that we're going to use in this formula okay now that you're familiar with those three named ranges so we're looking for conditions order bay equals 06 so that means it's order bay and order status equals in progress so we want to make sure that the order status in progress times the order ID does not equal B2. That means it's gonna be a different order. I'm looking for in progress and Bay two. And I wanna find it. I wanna find it here, in progress and Bay two. But I wanna make sure it's not the current order. Notice that this is order number seven, right? So it has to be a different order, not the same one. So if I find this one, let's just look at this one again. If I find that there's another one that's in progress in Bay two and it's not order ID seven, that means it's a conflict, right? So we can't have that. That's what we're checking for. So though we're checking on all those three conditions, let's take a quick look at them once again. The order Bay must have whatever's in 06, the status must be in progress, and the order ID must not equal the current order ID, and it must not equal zero. So that means one or two or any number of conditions. So that means if this instance is found more than zero times, one or above, and it's in progress, that means it's a conflict. So all of this would be one. If it's one, that means it's found, right? It's found in another instance, and we can't have that. So those conditions, this is above, not equal to zero, and this is in progress, then it becomes true, otherwise it's false. So that's how we check for conflicting base. So if I try to assign this here to bay one, just as we know, we know bay one's already occupied and we can let them know. So how do we get that? So that's gonna happen on change event of 06. So let's just take a quick look in that change event. So go into auto worksheets and I just wanna look at that so we can see quickly how that happens. And that's gonna happen on a worksheet change event. On bay, check for occupied. So that means if the user makes a change to either this or this, I just need to look. If this is true, let the user know. So on a change of 05 or 06, and 06 does not equal empty, and B1 equals false means not loading any order, and B12 equals true, that means there's a conflict, then simply target value is already occupied. Probably should put, um, oh, I wanna put this one. 06 is already occupied because a target could be two, target could be 05 or 06. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to range 06. So I think that, that makes a little bit more sense. 
0.06.value. So letting them know whatever the bay is, it's already occupied. Please locate an empty area name. Now, why do I use area name? Area name is whatever the user has set as the name. We're using bay, but it's called area name, and that's going to be a dynamic name. So if they use garage or pit or area or whatever, then it's going to automatically come up to whatever the user has set it in. So basically, we're simply checking for a conflict, and if there is a conflict, we're going to clear 06. We saw that when I misassigned this bay that was already occupied, it told us right away and it cleared it out. So that was very helpful. And if there's no conflict, it allows it. So we see bay two is available. Okay, very good. So yeah, I'm glad I got to show that part to you. So that's very helpful. So as we continue on with our order save update, we want to make sure there's no conflicting bay. So this double checks. We're going to turn off application screen updating. And now what we're going to do is I want to determine, is it a new order or is it an existing order? Remember, B3 is going to tell us if B3 is blank, we know it is a new order. What do we do if it is a new order? We must assign it a brand new order row. And to do that, we're going to find that first available row inside our order database. I'm then going to ensure that we have put that new order. So again, just to double check whatever that next available order is right here in B4, I'm going to place that directly in B2. So B2 is going to take on whatever's in B4. That is the next order ID. I'm also going to take that same next order ID, probably in B2, just in case either one would be fine. And we're going to place it in column A of the first available row. So that means whatever's located inside B2 is going to take on that first available right here. So order ID 11 would go there. Continuing on, that's all we need to do for new. If it's an existing order, all we need to do is extract the order row from B3. This time we're going to include the order total. We're going to run a loop. Remember previously, we only went to 27. Since we're saving information, I can then take whatever's located in our total and save it into the last column. That's the last one, right? So we can go all the way to column 28 because we're saving the total and putting it directly inside here. I want that total to be in my database. That's very important for our reports that we're gonna run or any graphs or charts that we might wanna create in the future. So it's good to have the total information in here. Okay, very good. So we're simply gonna run that loop from two to 28. Notice we're going to two. I am also starting out with that customer ID, that customer ID, we're gonna save it to the database. However, the customer ID does not get loaded in. The order ID has already been done. So simply reverse data mapping, we are going to then take all the information from our sheet and place it into the database. Saving the updating items, we're gonna do here. So I need to determine what the last row is. We need to update or add new items to this database, which is our order items database. And to do that, what I need to do is first determine what is the last row. So we're gonna determine what that last row is using column R. And if the row is less than nine, of course, we can skip that. However, if it's not, what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through these rows. Now I need to know if this item has already been saved on the database. How would I know if it's been saved already? What I've done is I've put the database row right here. If we remember correctly, we loaded that database. This tells me that it's been already added. If I decide I want to add additional part here and I wanna save this, I know that there's no database row associated with this. So when I run the save and update, we wanna make sure that this line item gets added to the first available row inside our order database, which would go here. So what we want to do is we want to loop through these items. I want to look to see if there's a row. If there is a row, we're going to update perhaps any changes that were made by saving the information from the row inside our order items database. However, if there is no, we're going to find the first available row and save this information. So that's exactly what we're going to do inside this macro. So first up, what we want to do is determine that last item row based on column R. If it is less than nine, we're going to skip it and go all the way down here to no items. If there is data, what we're going to do is we're going to start out and run a loop for the item row for nine to the last item row. So that's very important that we run the loop. First thing we want to do is check column Y to see if it has been previously saved. So if Y in the item row equals empty, then it is a new database item. As mentioned, we're going to find that first available row inside our order items database. Inside that column A is going to take on that order number, which is located in B2. Column J is going to take on the item row and column K is going to take on that database row, which is a calculated formula. So those are for only new items. And that means new items get three things. They get an order ID, they get the item row, that's the row that it's sitting on in the order, and the database row based on a formula. We add a formula because if I were to delete this row, then all of the rows automatically update with the correct database row. So these three items are only added for new database items. The rest of the item information is added regardless whether it is a new 
or an existing item. So to do that, we can then move on. We also want to take that brand new database row and place it in Y. So we're going to do that. That's the last line for our new items. If it is an existing item, all we need to do is extract that database row into a variable called item database row. And it's going to come directly from Y in the item row. Then regardless if it's a new or an existing item, all we need to do is take the information from here and save it. So basically all I need to do is take all this information all the way up to cost, pretty much save it directly inside our order database row, labor, part, tech, amount, cost, and uh, theoretically the item row, but it's already been added. So I wanna take all this information here and simply save it inside this database. We can do that with one line of code. That means that inside our order database row from B to column I is simply equal to Q all the way through X. And that's exactly what we've done in this line of code. B through I equals Q through X. So that's gonna save those item details in one line of code. Next up, we're gonna reload this list. That's the macro that automatically updates this list that we've already been over. And also what I wanna do is I want to reload Autobase. I'll be going over that in just a moment. Turn on application screen updating and then run a fade out message. This fade out message is simply a shape that it's gonna slowly fade out. That's pretty easy. So it's just when I save it, you see this shape here is gonna slowly fade out and then it's gonna disappear. So that's it. Okay, now the next macro that I wanna go over with you is how to load these cars up. It's really nice. So I've got an individual car. And to do that, we're going to simply, when I click on a car, I wanna load the individual order, which is kind of a nice feature. And to do that, we need to start off with some cars. So as we have seen previously, I've got a list of, let's say, what is this? Uh, eight different car colors. We've got a uh, blue, black, white, gray, red, yellow, and orange. Each one of these has an individual name based on their color. So this is called car black car white, car gray, and so on and so forth. So you get the point. So the idea is relatively simple. If we run a list, I wanna know all of the cars that are in progress. And I wanna run through advanced filters. So I want to know all the cars that are in progress. And then I wanna load them here. I wanna load the information. I wanna load the bay, the color, the model, the customer name, and the ID. I want all that inside an advanced filter. Then what I'm going to do, based on the color of the car, I'm gonna duplicate whatever the color, like if it's color white, I'm going to simply duplicate the white car. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign it a very specific name. It's simply gonna be called something like, let's take a look at this, a vehicle picture bay order. Then I want the order ID. So the only important information is the order ID. Each one of these have the same name, except it ends in the order ID. So that's very important. So we're simply gonna duplicate that and we're gonna position it accordingly in column I. So let's take a look at the macro. It's in our order macro, so we can just go back into the definition. It's gonna take us right here to auto bay refresh. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. We will be dimensioning some variables. We need the vehicle picture as a shape, the bay number as long, and the bay item number as long. I'll be going over those. The bay name, the vehicle color, customer name, model and order ID, those are all string variables. Anytime we wanna refresh this, the first thing what I wanna do is I wanna remove all the existing cars. Obviously not the sample ones here, but I wanna remove these. So that's why we're using a very unique name. So any shape that contains vehicle, picture, bay, order, I wanna simply delete. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through all of the shapes within the sheet and look for very specific shapes. And if they contain that, we are going to delete them. So using our shape variable here called vehicle picture for each vehicle picture in dot shape. So we're already inside the auto workshop manager. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check for the name. So we're going to then use the in string function and checking on the vehicle picture name. If it contains vehicle pick bay order, it's greater than zero, then we're simply going to delete it. So this will delete all of the existing cars. We're gonna clear the variable vehicle picture. We're clearing that. Now what we want to do is I want to run a loop for the bay number equals one to 10, right? There's only a maximum of 10. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna run a loop from here. I wanna look at, of course you can set that for more, we can increase the loop, but I'm just limiting it to 10. So to do that, we're going to set that vehicle. And then what I wanna do is I also wanna clear some shape information out. I've got shapes here. This one is called text shape bay one. This is called text shape bay two and so on and so forth. So you can imagine that. So I wanna clear the information out here inside this text shape. So to do that, we are gonna run a loop for the text shape bay and the bay number, text frame, text range, text clear. So we're clearing all the text on all of these shapes. So what would it look like? Well, why don't we stop the code here? And then what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna run it and we see that we have no cars 
and the text is here but they're simply empty so that's exactly what it's going to look like without any cars okay so if we continue on with the code now what we want to do is we want to run an advanced filter based on those orders so we can continue with the code here and also we want to determine the last row of the order database again one more advanced filter on our database however we're going to be using some different criteria this time the criteria is going to be focused on let's pull the order database up is going to be focused on our in progress orders which is ar2 through ar3 and our results are going to come here to au through ay so one more advanced filter however our criteria is ar2 through r3 and our results are going to come here we'll determine the last results row assuming that there are results we're going to loop through the results i want to put a lot of information inside some variables the order id is going to come from au customer name from av vehicle model the vehicle color and the bay name so we're going to capture all of that information and now what i want to do is i want to determine the bay number now this is kind of important so we see that this is bay seven what i really want to do is i want to get a number for this i want to know that bay seven is really the seventh item found here so how do we do that well i've got a named range called bay area let's take a look at that named range here once again i think it's called bay area auto base here so this is the named range i'm going to look in so what i want to do is when i find a bay i want to know which position is it one all the way through 10. so i want to assign a number to that to do that we're going to use the find function so let's take a look inside the code so in case it's not found it could create an error so we've wrapped it in on air resume next and on error go to zero so we're going to get that bay number it's going to be one through ten we're going to look inside the admin i'm going to look inside that same named range that i just showed you i'm looking for the bay name and i want the row minus six why am i doing minus six because i want to associate this one with one what row is it found on it's found on row seven if i want the number i'm simply going to subtract six so this is one two and three who knows what people are going to name their bays they may not use numbers so we really want to extract the number from wherever the position or the row that it's found so i want this to be one so we're subtracting six from the row that is going to get us our bay item number and that's very important because i need to know where to place it am i placing it here 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 where am i going to place it right so based on its number it's going to be placed you know the first one's going to be placed in row three the second one's going to be placed in row eight so it's in multiples of five and 13 and so on and so forth so that number is going to help us position it inside the correct row in excel so to do that if the bay item is for some reason zero at this point we're going to go to the next result i want to set the vehicle picture now it's based on color remember i said i had individual car samples already here that are based simply on the car and the color so when i do car underscore and the color when i combine this we're going to determine what the sample car that we're going to be using so to do that we're going to be able to set the vehicle picture it's a shape variable auto worksheet shapes car underscore and the vehicle color so this is set sample car shape once it's set we can then duplicate it and that's exactly what we're going to do if it's not nothing but if it's nothing meaning for some reason there's an issue with the variable or issue with the car the color is not found we're going to skip the vehicle if you put in silver or pink it's not there it's going to skip it right because we don't have that okay so if that color is found we can then duplicate it so i'm going to use vehicle pick duplicating it and i want to assign a very unique name and i want to add that order id onto the name so to do that we're going to set the original text which is vehicle pick bay order and then the order id so the combination is going to give it that unique name that unique name is very important because i'm going to need to extract that id when i select it, i need to pull that id so very important that we have the order id at the end of it okay great once we have that then we want to position it so we're going to focus on that brand new shape that we just created we're going to set the left position we know it's going to be based on column i and the left and then add 32 and that's going to set it up directly and position it where we want to also what we want to do is set that top position now remember i said it's in multiples of five but it's also going to start on row three so three is our starting position and then it's in multiples of five three eight 13 and so on and so forth so to do that we can use a bit of a formula to help us position it so let's just say that the first one found if it's the first one where do i need to position i need to position it in row three right so let's assume that the bay number is one the first one found if i subtract one that's going to get us zero i'm going to multiply that times five that's of course going to get us zero if i add zero to three it's going to be row three if it's the second one found two minus one that's one if i multiply that times five it's five if i add that to three it's eight so that's how we get that and then i'm simply going to update the top position subtract 24 that's going to position it directly where we want 
too. That's going to set the top position. I also want to create a macro on that. Remember when we select it, we want something to happen. So we want to assign a macro to that. I'll be going over that macro next. That macro name is vehicle select. So on action vehicle select. Now we could just as easily assign a macro to all of our samples and that would carry over when I duplicate it, but I didn't do that. You could easily assign that macro simply by right clicking, assign the macro, and then just typing in vehicle select and that would work too. So vehicle select, then when we duplicate that, we got a lot of them here. That would work too, just adding that. Okay, but we've done it inside the VBA code, so that's just fine here. And that's all we have to do to position the vehicle. But now what we want to do is we want to update the text shape. Remember, we also want to display the customer, the color, and the model inside these text boxes. So how do we do that? Well, again, each one of these text boxes is based on the bay number. So we know the bay number. If we know that, then we can add in the information. So text shape bay plus the bay item number, text frame, text range text equals the customer name plus a dash plus the vehicle color plus a space and the vehicle model. That's going to get us all the information in here so that we now have the vehicle color and we have the information on that. I did not assign a macro to this. I could easily just as do that, which is fine, but I only assigned it to the car. So no problem. So there we have it. And if I didn't want to assign a macro, I would simply add on here or start it out with the ID of the order, but we've done it just with the picture. Okay, great. So that's all we need to do to automatically assign and position it. Now, remember when I click on these, I want something to happen. That of course is the vehicle select macro. So vehicle select is the next macro and it's super simple. As we see, all I really need to do is extract the order ID and place it directly inside B2 and then run the macro. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So to extract that ID, all we need to do is use the replace and the application caller. That is the name of the shape they call it. We know the name of the shape is gonna be this and the order ID. So if I use the replace statement and I extract this information and I replace it with nothing, what's that gonna do? It's gonna leave us with the order ID. That order ID we're gonna place directly inside B2. Then we're gonna run the macro order load. That's it, <laughs> super simple. Okay, just as like with these, all we need to do is take the order ID from column C and place it in here and run the macro. So it's relatively easy. All we need to do is put the order ID in the right place. Okay, very cool. Before I let you go, we've got a few more minutes. I wanna go over a little bit about the vehicle macros, saving them, and then the vehicle pictures or something else we'll have to get to next time or inside our Patreon update because we're almost out of time. So inside the vehicles here, we are able to save, clear, and delete a vehicle. Let's go over some of the macros on that. So inside our vehicle macros module here, I've got load customer vehicles, which we've already been over. Clear is relatively simple. All we need to do is clear the information. I wanna make sure we clear the current ID. So when I run this macro, this is this little macro that's assigned, this little broom. When I click that, it's gonna clear all the associated sales and it's gonna clear the selected vehicle ID. So that's very important. This gives the user the ability to add a brand new vehicle. So if I put in something like Toyota here, I wanna make sure that that gets automatically added. And then we can just do red, okay? So now what we wanna do is I wanna make sure that that information gets saved. So how do we do that? So we are going to be able to save it. Let's skip down right here and then we'll go to load next. I wanna ensure the auto worksheet. I wanna make sure that there are some required fields, both L17 and L18 are required in order to save the vehicle. So that is gonna be both the model and the color. I wanna make sure that both of these are required. And I've given it a drop down list of colors. This is simply a data validation of colors and they're coming directly from here. So you see that that's colors. So we wanna make sure if either the vehicle model or the color are empty, we're gonna please make sure to add vehicle name and color before it's This is probably vehicle model, not really vehicle name. Let's just put model, it's a little bit confusing model and color before saving. Okay, so we're just letting the user know that those are both required. It is the same macro, save vehicle, that is going to save a new one here, or it's also the same macro that's going to be able to update if I change the color and I save it. So both of these saving or updating are going to be used by the same macro. If I decide I wanna add a brand new vehicle, clearing that information out, if I start adding some information, we look to B19, we see if there's no row, then we know it's a new vehicle. B19 is our differentiator between new and existing records. It's a new vehicle, we're gonna get the new row, we're gonna assign a brand new vehicle ID based on what's located in B20, 
And then we're simply going to add the vehicle ID and the customer ID both inside the vehicle database. That vehicle database is going to take on both the vehicle ID and the customer ID and everything else is going to be here. Very good. So next up, what we want to do is we want to ensure that we save all the information. Again, we can use another data mapping here, but we also want to make sure that if it is an existing vehicle, we're just simply going to extract a row from B19. Now we're going to use data mapping from three to six. It's a short data mapping. All we're going to be doing is the columns three to six. So if we look inside our vehicles database, columns three all the way to six, we're simply going to add the information here. So how do we do that? There's no data mapping here. Well, we see here they're all in order. Model, color, license, notes that's in a certain order row 17 through 20 is in exactly the same order here three through six so model color license all in the same order so if we have this kind of data mapping it's very easy to do so we're going to take the information it's going to come into the vehicle database based on the row based on the column columns three to six we know the row it's either an existing row here or a new row here and where's it going to come from it's going to come from the vehicle column which is three plus 14 17 is that first row of data so if i know the column let's say the model is going to go into column three here and it's got to come from row 17 i'm simply going to add 14 onto that and that's exactly what i've done here next up after that save we're simply going to reload the list of customers we've already been over that so we're going to reload the list and that's going to take it so if i change this to optimum and then i just want to save that saving the vehicle we want to make sure that that name automatically gets updated right here so we can see that automatically updated because we are running the macro and then we just want to run a fade out message as you saw here you see save vehicle we see another vehicle saved fade out message right here it could probably change the color so it stands out a bit more okay and so we run that save message deleting the vehicle all we're going to be doing is extracting the database row from b19 and we're going to delete it there we're clearing the vehicle running the macro to clear and we're loading the vehicle customers is almost exactly the same so we don't need to go into that we're simply clearing it we're deleting it extracting the row except this time the customer id customer row and next customer are all coming from here so it's relatively the same thing all right very very cool we went over almost all the most important things right this is a really really cool training profit we went over this is just a little bit of a pie chart we went over this information here and also simply coming from if i select the data here we see that it's based on the data located right here inside build labor and build cost build labor here build cost relatively simple donut chart there okay very very cool printing the order relatively simple i've already set our print here so if we take a look here this is our print range so by page layout simply setting that print area it is a single macro just simply a print out if we were to take a look at that macro we edit it it is a single line of code print out and that's it it's pretty simple there so when we want to print the order it's going to print to the default printer very easily and it's only going to print the information that we want so we could see that printed order it looks quite nice all right very cool we are out of time but thank you so much for joining us let me know what you want me to cover inside our update that's going to be on patreon or youtube silver members i'll be adding a lot of features to this mostly based on your suggestions your ideas thank you so much for your continued support don't forget i've got 300 of my best templates available inside a single zip file that is at a discounted rate so I'll include the link down below go ahead and click on that that'll help support us and we'll see you next time thanks so much